Okay, in this math tutorial we're going to look at the dreaded word problem. Well, not really. We're just going to look at some typical word problems that you might encounter in a college algebra class or some basic algebra class in college. Uh, what I tell my students when you're going to solve a word problem, read the problem carefully make sure you understand what it says, what it's asking you for. Form a picture in your mind, or better yet, draw a picture. Make sure you identify what they're asking you for. And of course, in most, most cases, you're going to have to generate an equation that involves a variable, or in some cases, it could be two variables. And then the easy part should be solving the equation. So let's look at the first problem. How much water must be evaporated from 32 ounces of a 4% salt solution to make a 6% salt solution? Well, the first thing you should understand is that whatever salt we have at the beginning will still be there at the end because we're not going to take any salt away. We're going to take some water away. So here's here's a situation. First, let's find out how much salt we have. So we have 32 ounces and 4% is salt. So if I multiply thirty two by point zero four four percent change it to a decimal move the decimal over two places so if I multiply those out I get one point twenty eight okay so of the thirty two ounces of the solution one point twenty eight ounces is salt. Now we want to take some water away so if we take some water away that's going to increase the concentration of the salt and of course you want it to increase to six percent. So let's let uh, let's let pick a, va a variable let's say x x will equal to the amount water. And I'm trying to be real careful here because I have trouble. My hands are a little bit shaky. So trying to write with the mouse, it's a little bit difficult. So let's let x equal to the amount of water that we need to evaporate. So that means that out of the 32, ounces we want to take away X amount of water and that's going to be ounces so we want to figure out how much that is so from the 32 ounces I want to take X ounces away and of course that's going to be X ounces of water and I want this to be 6% salt. So that, that tells me that if I multiply this amount by 6% or 0 0.06 when I convert it, that's still going to give me the same amount of salt that I had to start off with. And what was that? 1.28. So there's, there's your equation. You solve that equation for x, and that, that would be the answer to the problem. So you would multiply through by 0 0.06. So 32 times 0 0.06, let me put it up here, 
be 1.982. This would be minus, and then 0 0.06 times the x would be 0 0.06 x. And that's going to equal 2, still the 1.28. So now we saw this equation for x. Okay, so bear with me here on this. Uh, this is a point here. So point zero 0.06, and that's an x here. And I just do it like this. And I'm going to subtract 1.92 from both sides. So that's, that's going to give me a minus 0.64 over here. Okay. So again, let me read this out just in case you can't make out my writing with this uh, pen here. Uh, once I subtract the 1.92 from both sides, I get a negative 0.06x equals to a negative 0.64 x. So I get x is equal to, so negative 0.64 divided by negative 0.06 is going to give me approximately 10. Okay, so again negative 0.64 divided by negative 0.06 gives me x is equal to 10.67 and remember the units here is ounces so that's 10.67 ounces okay so here's the equation multiply by 0 0.06 to get this up here isolated the term with the x divided both sides by negative 0 0.06 and I get x is equal to 10.67 Okay, let me clear this, and let's go to the next one. Okay, again, these are, these are typical problems. Uh, you have mixture problems in algebra. You have problems involving uh, finance. These problems are similar. So here I have uh, a bank loaned twelve thousand dollars, part of it at eight percent per year and the rest at a rate of eighteen percent per year. If the interest received totaled at one thousand dollars, how much was loaned at eight percent? Okay, so everything is laid out and we want to know the amount at eight percent. Okay, so here I'm just gonna say let X equal X is equal to the amount loaned at 8%. And it tells me that the interest received totaled $1,000. Okay, so keep in mind that if, that if X is the amount at 8% and the total was $12,000, then if I take the $12,000 and subtract X from it, Okay, just to save me some uh, issues here, I'm just going to tell you what it, it represents. Uh, I would write it out here, but uh, the, the 12,000 minus X would actually represent the amount at uh, 18%. Okay. And now this is this this is this is a problem that could be done with uh, with two variables. You'll find that in algebra sometimes you work uh, equations involving one variable 
sometimes you have systems of equations where you use an x and a y. So actually here we could use two variables if we wanted to. We could say let x represent the amount at uh, 8%, let y represent the amount at uh, 18%, and we could set up two equations with x and y and solve it. But we don't need to do that here because uh, with this information here, since they tell me the interest received was to what totaled $1,000, that, that tells me then that if I take the, the x and multiply it by the 8%, and remember you got to convert it to a decimal, so it'd be 0 0.08. Okay, so this would be the interest. This represents the interest uh, generated from the 8%. Okay, so now if I take the 12,000 subtract the x that represents the amount at the 18% so if I multiply this by 0.18 That gives me the interest earned from the 18%. Okay, so this is the amount earned here. This is the amount earned for this one. So if I add this up, this is the total amount of interest that was earned, which they tell me is $1,000. So just set this equal to 1,000. And that's your equation. Now it's just a matter of multiplying this out. Okay, so this would be 0.08x and maybe do this one. Next one I just uh, used to distribute it properly, so I multiply by 0.18, so 0.18 times the 12,000, 0.18 times the minus x, and then write out what you get. So 12,000 times the 0.18, use your calculator, and that's going to give me 2160. Okay, minus point. 18x is equal to 1,000. Okay, so now I would take the 0.08x and subtract 0.18x, and that would give me point a negative 0.1. X. Okay. And then I would take the 2160, 2160, uh, take it over to the other side, subtract it from the 1000. So that would give me a negative 1160. So I got negative 0.1x equal to negative 1,160. Okay, solve it for x, divide both sides by negative 0.1, and I'm going to get x is equal to eleven thousand. Just get to clear one part, but I cleared the whole thing. So let me just write out the last the, the last part that I had. I had a minus 0.1x equal to a negative 1160. So I divided through by a negative 
and I get x is equal to 11,600. That is dollars. Okay. So x is equal to 11,600. Okay, let me clear this. So the answer is 11,600. Clear this. Let's go to the next one. Now these are problems involving rates of speed. Another typical problem from algebra, which is, is basically using this formula right here. Your distance formula. So the distance formula says distance is equal to rate multiplied by time t. So d is equal to rt. So that's rate of speed. So in other words, uh, say you're going 50, 50 miles per hour. Okay, so normally, normally, normally this is going to be in miles per hour. And the time t will be any unit, but usually if this is in miles per hour, this will be in hours. So it'll be like this. So notice the hours would cancel out and you wind up with miles. So if you multiply rate of speed by time, that gives you distance or miles. In the same way, if I take that formula and solve for t, in other words, divide both sides, divide both sides by r, divide this side by r, this side by r, I get the time is equal to distance divided by the rate. Okay, because sometimes you're going to use the initial formula, d is equal to rt. Sometimes, like in this problem here, you'll use the time is equal to d divided by r. So let's read, read the problem. A motorboat maintain a constant speed of 15 miles per hour relative to the water and going 10 miles upstream and then returning. Okay, so it goes upstream against the curve and then back, or the current I should say, and then returns. The total time for the trip was 1.5 hours. Use this information to find the speed of the current. Okay, so obviously if, you, if you're going with the current, you're going with the current, you're going faster because the current is pushing you. If you're going against the current, you're going slower because you're going against the, the, the current is slowing you down. So we're looking for the speed of the current, so let x equal to speed of current. Okay, current. Total time is 1.5 hours. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. Uh, distance divided by rate is the time. Okay, so let's say Let's say we go 10 miles with the current. Then our speed is going to be the speed of the boat plus the speed of the current. Okay, so distance divided by rate, okay, is time. So th this is the time. This is the time then going with the current and then same distance coming back, say against the current, either way. So we're going against the current, we subtract the speed of the current. Okay, so let's say this is the distance going with the current, and this is the distance coming back against the current. That's that's the total time. Okay, so we add these two. 
that's the total time then going and coming with and against the current and they tell me that's 1.5 hours okay so since I have this side it's fractions I'm going to put the 1.5 as a fraction and say that's going to be three halves okay that's your equation So it's just a matter of solving that equation. So uh, what we're going to do here, anytime you have a fractional equation, the best way to solve it is to multiply through by the LCD, which is going to be, in this case, what you have in the denominator. So 15 plus x, 15 minus x, and the 2. Okay, so basically it's going to be, the LCD is going to be 2, and then parentheses, and parentheses, and I'm not going to write, well, maybe I will. Um, 15. But I can't get it in there. So, okay, so this, let's this, say this parenthesis right here is 15 plus x, and this parenthesis over here is 15 minus x. So I'm going to multiply through, I'm going to multiply through by 2, 15 plus x, and 15 minus x. So what's going to happen in, in the first fraction? The 15 plus x is going to cancel. So I'm going to have the 2 left over to multiply the 10. That's going to give me 20. And then I'm going to have left a 15 minus x. Okay. So in other words, when you have a fractional equation, you multiply through by the LCD, and that clears it of fractions. Okay, for the second one, second fraction on the left side here, again, I'm multiplying through by the LCD. So in this case, uh, the 15 minus X is going to cancel. So I'm going to have still this 2 here times the 10, so that's still going to give me a 20. And I have one factor of 15 plus X left over. Okay, now on the right side, you're going to multiply both sides. Now on the right side, this, this 2 right here and this 2 right here are going to cancel. So the 3 will still stay. And I'll have the two factors of 15 plus x and 15 minus x. Okay. I'll just multiply those out and say that's, that's 2, 25. minus x squared. Okay. Fifth left side. I gotta multiply here by twenty. And on this next set of I have to multiply by twenty. So twenty times fifteen is six hundred. Over here twenty times fifteen is is uh, I'm sorry, three hundred. So 20 times 15 is 300, and 20 times 15 is 300. Those we're going to have to add up, so that's going to give me 600. I'll put it down here. And then 20 times minus x is minus 20x, and 20 plus x is 20x. So I have a minus 20x and a plus 20x. Those cancel out, okay? So all I have left on the uh, left side is 600. Okay. On the right side, I multiply through by 3, and I get 675. 3 times 225 minus 3 times the minus x squared would be minus 3x squared. Okay, so let's bring, let's bring the 600 over to this side, make it a minus 600. That'll give me 75. Okay. 675 minus 675. Let's take the minus 3x squared to this side, so that'll give me a 3x squared. So I get 3x squared is equal to 75. So solve that for x. Divide both sides by 3. I'll put it over here. Uh, x squared will equal 2. 25. Okay. 
Solve for x, so uh, it's x squared is equal to 25. There's two numbers you can square to get 25, a 5 and a negative 5. So the answer could be 5 or negative 5, but in this particular case, since we're dealing with uh, speed, the answer has to be positive. So the only answer we could choose then is would be x is equal to 5. Okay. Always include your units. Okay. Uh, so in this case, it's 5 miles per hour. So the speed of the current is 5 miles per hour. Okay, so set up the equation. Distance over rate gives me time. Distance over rate gives me time. So I get the time going with the current and the time coming back with against the current. That total time is 1.5 hours or 3 half hours. That sets up the equation. Multiply through by the LCD to get this part right here. Okay, and then of course simplify that to get this equation here, 3x squared equals 75, divide by 3, x squared equals 25, take the square root, and take the positive sign only, so the answer again is x is equal to 5, and the units is miles per hour. Okay, let me clear this. And then there's some there's some word problems where they seem kind of hard, and uh, it's just a matter of uh, thinking it out, using a little bit of common sense. You don't really have to write anything. This one this one tells you that the bacteria in a four liter container uh, doubles. This should be an S here. Doubles every minute after. 60 minutes, the container is full. Okay, so it doubles every minute, and it says after 60 minutes, the container is full. How long did it take the to fill half the container? So how long did it take to fill half the container? Think about it. It doubles every minute. So one minute ago, say it was half, right? Because if we say it was half and then you double that, you get two times one half is one. So the answer is 59 minutes, okay? Hope this helps. Again, this is this is just some typical problems that you see in algebra. I'll be putting on some other tutorials. Appreciate if you uh, subscribe to my channel, and if you have ideas on uh, some topics that you want me to cover, feel free to uh, post and let me know what you want to see. Appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next video.